First time that ever happened. Okay, here we go again. Um, another one I was majorly influenced by after Tom Sawyer was YYZ. It was uh, summer of 82, and I started playing, actually it'll be 40 years this Christmas. Uh, Christmas Day, 81, I got my first little kick, snare, sna snare, Tom, and uh, a 12-inch splash cymbal. That was it, no hi-hat, nothing else. Um, so I had discovered Tom Sawyer, and uh, drum teacher was actually transcribing the part. That's how he did a lot of his teaching. He would take part of his deal with songs and write them out, and um, like credence and stuff like that. And uh, but he was working on this new one, Tom Sawyer. I was like, "What's that?" Checked it out. Holy crap! So that was my first exposure to Neil. And then um, that summer, when we'd moved to Maryland and uh, went back to Pennsylvania to visit. And was talking with my neighbor, Tim Steinauer. What's up, Tim? Who was um, playing guitar and telling him about Tom Sawyer. And this nigga goes, oh, you like Rush? Exit stage left. Let me let you hear this song called YYZ. Dude. <laughs> that was it. Matter of fact, I've even got a picture of me that summer. I'll, I'll post it on the thing, too. But there you go. That's two drum kits after I bought... Um, from a kid in middle school he was quitting drums getting into football and uh sold me his ludwig 63 basic starter kit and i was doing the four toms my mom wrote on the back of pictures did the four toms across the front which is kind of funny because i got four now but two of them obviously you can see are snare drums the other the main snare was this acrylate that i've got still um but anyway, that's how I became a Neil guy. That's when I got a double bass and a hi-hat in the same day, six months after I started playing. But um, so also that same summer, probably a couple months after that, and like listening to a lot of the rest of the album because a buddy of mine let me borrow it. I couldn't afford to buy it. Uh, when I got back to Maryland, he let me borrow it. So I was checking out the whole album all summer. So I wrote a letter to Ask a Pro at Modern Drummer to Neil asking him about double bass. I mean, I sound like a dork, I think. I was... 14, um, just asking how I got to use double bass so well on exit stage left. It sounds great, blah, 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 I can't get it fast. It's only in slow eighth notes. And anyway, I'm sure he was like, whatever. But he answered it. It was the May 1983 issue. Um, Earl Palmer was on the front. Whoops. And um, buddy of mine, John Petrosky, I think he liked the video from the other day, the free will one, uh, called me up that Friday night. And he goes, hey, did you write a letter to Neil Part? And modern drummer, I was like, yeah. He goes, well, what's in there? I was like, holy crap. I mean, I was 15 at this point, so couldn't sleep at night. It showed up the next day. Sure enough, there's my answer from Neil, which if I can post it, I'll do that, um, about how he got good at double bass, basically practice. And um, so from there, I just started to work on everything. So, but anyway, that's my little background on Hex Stage Left and YYZ. So, yeah, the song majorly impacted me besides the solo, which I mean, I still listen to the solo and I'm like, I, I still don't understand parts of it where I'm like, yeah, I don't know how, I don't know. But um, the parts I do know, I'm going to talk about. It's the first one, I'll post it on the thing also, is the Phil which I thought was ingenious at right about the one minute mark. It's the one that's it's just two beats. It's on the snare and it um, just is on beat one and then crashes on three and keeps the groove going. I was like, that is so cool. But it's just a bunch of right left with a flame at the beginning, accenting. So let me just show you what that is. Again, slow, and then I'll speed it up just to give it for some reference. So the ride cymbal part, back then I thought it was um, 
there. I'll do it on the snare. Turns out, uh, once I listened to a couple things slower and then uh, found the drums only of you, uh, a YZ on YouTube, dude, that was, I wish I would have had that 40 years ago. Um, but I realized he only did the first two notes on the first 16th. So it was. Either way works. I learned the three notes, the one and a two and three and a four E and. Um, kick drum pretty much does what the right hand does for the most part, not everything. And um, and I didn't notice until the, probably within the last five or ten years that he accents pretty heavily the and of two. So now we get into the drum fills and the drum break section. This part, the first one especially, man, it took me forever. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, I, between the record player that my folks had, which slowed down to speed 16, used that all the time on that album, and my brother, electronic wizard, he was able to take the realistic tape player, anyone relate to that? got the tape in it and um he put this little dial on it where i was able to slow the speed of the tape down listen to it not with anything like this but with like sony well not even sony whatever the cheap headphones that i was able to have with little foam things on them that's what we had back in the 80s for anyone that <laughs> wasn't around then um so i was really trying to tell what s sound was what drum but what i kept hearing was not 16ths around the kit, not 16th triplets around the kit, but this variation of it. Um, apparently, watching the Joe interview with um, Neil in the uh, Taken Center Stage video, awesome. If you haven't got that, get that. Um, he got the idea from Terry Bozio, which got it from Tony Williams, and I've seen Billy Cobham do the same thing. Matter of fact, I did something recently, Pleasant Pheasant, and it was like that. What I hear in Neil's is not so much 32nd and 16th, but more 16th triplets, but kind of stretched. Here's what I'm talking about. Check this out. Actually, I'll just show you. Top line, it's all 16th triplets, except it's 16th, and then a 16th triplet ended to 16. It's like everything spaced really weird, but it actually fit, and it sounds killer. The way he's accenting it and everything. I'll play you both versions just so you can kind of hear what I'm talking about. That's what I'm hearing is like this stretch 16 type thing. And I'll do it on the toms too. But what a lot of folks will say it is, is more like a 32nd 16th thing, 
which I can see that too. But as fast as that song is, you can't help but naturally turn it into that, which I think is just nicer. So here's the 16th um, triplet into the 16th 32nd note. And then here's how I do it with the 32nd or the 16th triplet vibe on the toms. So each one is doing like a. This goes louder each one. First time that ever happened. Okay, so the next drum break at about two minutes and four seconds. It's not as hard as the first one, in my opinion, but it's still not easy. It's 16th note triplets on the snare and then his 12 inch tom, which is where my eight inch tom is. Uh, and that thing always messed with me because I always thought it was like one of his concert times, but he just had it so tuned up that it just had that amazing, I don't even know what you call it, but just that sound. So, but anyway, so he does beats one and two or 16th triplets, snare, and the 12 inch time in his case, then 16ths, and he brings on the end of three uh, a snare hit and then hits the floor tom on beat four and the heats he did this a lot he hit the e crashed on the e of the beat he did a lot of fills like that where he would just do and several times in this song so anyway here's that fill slowed down sped up and i'm starting on the snare And then the grand finale for the song and the studio version anyway, is that two bar drum break um, after he and Getty trade. And same thing, it starts on his 12 inch tom, my eight, and both times he ends on that crash on the E of uh, four. So first time is this da 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 da. And then he comes all the way around the concert times, which I will start on this. But he does the thing. I remember reading in Modern Drummer, I think it was in 82. Um, he had three articles about the making of moving pictures. Anyone remember that? Comment below. And I remember one of the things he talked about was he had started getting into starting something on the toms and doing a triplet. And then that way he'd be coming down leading with the right hand, but it's on the E or the uh. Gave it a real cool sound so he did that here so on his i've got it where he went i'll just show you this also from the six inch all the way down them from the six to the eight to the ten to the twelve inch um concert tom and then he switches or skips his high pitch twelve to close tom goes to the thirteen and then he skips the fifteen and goes to the eighteen um and i remember correct me if i'm wrong but he had the twelve inch 
tuned higher than the 12 inch concert tom and the pitch between the 12 inch concert tom and the 13 was stair step but this was for those accents and those cool things like he did um so he did it in tom sawyer also he skipped completely that one and uh but anyway so here's here's my take on that So after that, goes into the guitar solo, and they do the long uh, meeting at the airport section with the keyboards, and then come back out of it into the groove. And once again, it's three minutes, 33 seconds down here. He does this uh, same thing. He goes over the bar line. Instead of just um, doing this fill on the fourth bar of the phrase, he does that, and then he comes out of it on beats one and two, ends on the uh of two in the next phrase, which is just totally killing, man. I mean, he was on top of his game back here. So, but anyway, that fill, um, it's kind of like that other one near the beginning where he does that on the snare only, except it's kind of the same thing almost three times. So here's that slow on the snare and then around the kit. Okay, so a little bit later at 3.47, he goes around the toms, kind of like he did at the beginning, where he just went down all, well, his four right here. But um, he does it kind of different. On beat three, I'm writing it as a 16th note triplet, all six notes, and then four 16ths on beat four. But when you listen slow, it sounds like a combination of 32nd and 16th except the 30 seconds aren't quite 30 seconds and the 16th are faster are faster than regular 16th so it's almost like that's why i'm giving it the sixth stamp on it because it's like the first four notes are faster second are a little bit slower but it's not either it's kind of in between probably because of the speed of the song but it just sounds killer because it's like what the heck was that it's just really cool so anyway here's that fill
so for the last fill of the entire thing, um, I'm going to say it's the same concept as the fill for the first drum break with that 16th note triplet type vibe, but a lot of guys have written out the 32nd, 16th thing, so I'll do both. Uh, my interpretation, it goes from the concert toms all the way down. Well, he does the same thing again. He goes 6, 8, 10, 12, skips to the 13, and ends it on, I can't tell if it's the 15 or the 18, but he also ends with an and on the, or a kick drum thing. So, but either one would work. Uh, again, I've seen both, and I, it's so fast, I don't really think it matters. But anyway, here is that. So anyway, so there's my interpretation of what I hear Neil doing, how I play it. Again, you can play either way. You can let me know if you think it is more 30 seconds or 16th on some of those fills like at the end or the stretched triplet type thing. I think either way is genius. So um, anyway, I'll play uh, YYZ out for you, part of it. <laughs> 